Welcome back. So we were continuing on regression examples on empty cars data sets. So as we know that given a different features of new prototype car, can you predict the mileage or the miles per gallon of the car? Now, the data that you have in your hand is some sort of, you know, um, like this kind of typical table format that you have and say maybe Mazda RX-4, uh, which gives you 20 miles per gallon, 21 miles per gallon. It's a six cylinder car. It has a displacement of 160. It gives a horsepower of 110 and weight is 2.62. So there could be another car, Hornet 4 Drive, which is has a miles per gallon as 21.4 miles per gallon and six cylinder car displacement is about 258 and horsepower 110 weight is 3.215 now the prototype car that you have um, built maybe in, it's in only in, available in your you know computer models uh, it has a four cylinder car displacement is 120 horsepower is 100 and weight is 3.2 now you want to estimate what is the miles per gallon. So you want to predict or estimate the variable miles per gallon. So like any data science and project, what we will do, we will start with some visualization. So we take this weight, suppose we take this weight variable and the miles per gallon and we plotted them. So what we are seeing that as the weight of the car increases, the miles per gallon decreases. So we see a negative relationship between the weight and the miles per gallon. So naturally, we would like to fit a straight line to begin with miles per gallon as a function of beta naught plus beta one times weight plus some error. So that means there will be some error because you can see that this there is a some sort of randomness in the system and uh, you know so like this point we would like to have it on the straight line but there is th this not exactly there so there will be this difference is the error so for this point it's the error interestingly this point is almost on the line so error for this point will be almost zero so there will be some point which will be on the line or very close to the line. For them, the error will be zero. And then there will be some point here, some point here, some point here. For them, error will be, some error will be there. Now, now if we consider a third variable, a displacement in our analysis. So the model will be beta naught plus beta one times weight plus uh, beta 2 coefficient time displacement plus error. Now two things you must notice. First, in the previous case, we had only two variables, weight and miles per gallon. So the, all the points were on the two dimension. Now we are bringing third variable, displacement. In this axis displacement, this is a weight and this axis is miles per gallon. In this, so naturally all the points that we are seeing, they're in the three dimension. And so it's slightly you can, if you can imagine yourself, you are in a room, in one length is weight, uh, you know, x axis is weight, y axis is a displacement and the z axis is uh, miles per gallon then all these points are somewhere kind of you know hanging in the three dimension space so this is what you are seeing in the graph now this model is trying to fit a plane through these points hanging in the 3d space so previously it was a line in two dimensions prop space it was a the model was a line in three dimension space it's a plane okay 
So given a vector of inputs x1, x2, x3, now we are kind of putting in some kind of abstraction, we predict the output y. So y equal to beta naught plus x1 beta 1 plus x2 beta 2 plus x3 beta 3 plus epsilon. The term beta naught is the intercept. Often it is convenient to include a constant variable in the x matrices that includes the beta naught in the vector of coefficient beta which is only the beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. So in these things. So we have data about now y and x and we have a model what we don't know the value of these coefficients. So we want to estimate these parameters beta 1, beta 2, beta 3. Now we are going to expand this model to the p many features. It's just you had a model and three dimension model. Now you have a p dimension model. So in three dimension, in two dimension, you were fitting a straight line. In three dimension, you were trying to fit a sort of a plane where in the p dimension, more than three dimension, we cannot visualize. So what we have to do, we can just, you know, imagine that in a p dimension, it will um, fit a p minus one dimension hyperplane. So um, that is what exactly we are going to do. So why is this model is going to fit a p minus one dimensional hyperplane in a p-dimensional data space. So this is the exact same problem. We have bunch of x's, we have bunch of uh, and a y. The given x and y's, we want to estimate the betas. So that is where the whole problem lies. Now, in when it comes to estimation of beta, let us try to understand how the values of beta is going to affect my model. So let's take this line beta m naught as 35 and beta 1 is minus 5. So my model is mpg 35 minus 5 times weight plus epsilon. Now if I change it to 39 and minus 6, now the model is also changing. You can see. So there are only two data. One is two values that I'm considering for beta naught and beta 1, 35 and minus 5 and 39 and minus 6. And you can see the model is kind of, you know, changing accordingly. Now, what are the choices of beta that can I have? So, beta can, beta naught can take values around the say x-axis and suppose beta 1 takes the values around this axis. So, one possibility is beta naught is taking 35 and minus 5, so which is this value. Another possibility is beta naught is taking 39 and minus 6, so this is this value. And this gives us a two possible line. So the question is which one to choose. But one other question is why should I choose between these two only? There could be infinitely many possible choice of line and for each line I will get a different, 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 different. Each choices of beta I will get different choices of line. So which beta to choose? Each choice of beta will give me a line. Now question is which one to choose? So there comes an interesting concept called residual sum of squares of error and from where the concept of least square comes. So we have the model y equal to x beta plus epsilon, y is a n cross 1 vector, x is a n cross p vector matrix, beta is a p cross 1 vector and epsilon is a n cross 1 vector. Now what we are going to do, we are going to understand the residual sum of squares of error. So y minus x beta, so we can just take the x beta on the left side that gives us a y minus x beta which is epsilon effectively. Transpose y minus x beta, effectively what is it? This is y minus xi transpose beta whole square and sum of that. Now this is nothing but epsilon i square or epsilon transpose epsilon.
So this is called residual sum of squares of error. Now, if I plot this residual sum of squares against different choices of beta naught and beta one, we get a valley like, like this kind of a valley. And of course, we would like to choose a beta not and beta 1 somewhere in the valley which is the which will give me the minimum sum of squares of error and turns out it is the it its minimum always exists and it may not be unique but minimum always exists and we will talk about it but <coughs> this uh, we are going to talk about it but this is let's talk about more about it so how can we get this minimum so easiest thing is you differentiate this residual sum of square with respect to beta and set it equal to zero. So what is my residual sum of squares of beta? Y minus X beta transpose times Y minus X beta and differentiate it with respect to beta and set it equal to zero. So after differentiating what I have is minus two X transpose times Y minus X beta equals to zero. Now, this we can write it as x transpose x beta equal to x transpose y. This equation, set of equation is called normal equations and x transpose x is a p cross p matrix. So the normal equations have p unknown and p equations. Now solving this equation we can have beta hat equal to x transpose x inverse x transpose y and this solution is called ordinary least square solution on OLS or least square met method provides an analytical solution. We have an exact analytical solution because you see that all we have to do we have the data x in the data all we have x and y you just plug in x x and y in this formula this will give you beta hat and that's it your model is ready you can plug it in in this model you can deploy it in a production setup so we will stop here now and we will do some hands-on to see how these things work thank you